Hey y'all, Tom, ND3N here, and thanks for dropping into my shack for a ham shack chat. So, you've got yourself a brand spanking new Yesu FT DX10, just like me. Well, there are a couple things that you want to do before you go too far with playing with your new rig. And I'm going to show you three things every new FTDX10 owner needs to do on their rig. Before we get into the video, I've got a friend who plays in a soft rock country band that is really starting to get some notice in that industry. I've added a link to one of their newer songs at the end of this video, and I sure would appreciate it if you took a moment to watch that video and maybe give them a like. But for me, as always, any questions, concerns, corrections, please, or if you just want to tell me how great your latest pet is, please leave your remarks down in the comments. Remarkable. <laughs> we want to start off on the yesu.com website, which is right here. We're going to go to products, then HF transceivers and amplifiers. We're going to come over here and find our FTDX10. So we're going to select the Files tab and scroll down almost all the way to the bottom. So what we're looking for is this USB driver, virtual COM port driver for Windows 10 and 11. If you have an earlier version of Windows, if you download this manual right here, it will give you instructions on how to download all the different versions of Windows. For right now, we're just going to click on this link it's going to download it. I'm going to come here and open up the folder, which is right here. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to click extract all. That will pop up this window. I like to go ahead and just extract it straight to the download folder. You can browse for another folder if you'd like to store it more permanently. Click on extract and it brings up the extracted folders. What you want is this one that says Setup Information. You're going to click it, then right click on it, and go to Install. And we're going to go through the install process. And when it's all done, your operation will show completed. Now we can close all that. Keep this page open for now because we're going to be revisiting it in the very near future inside this video. I've also added a direct link to this page in the video description below. Now we need to pop into the radio and, and set our cat rates. So we push the function. We're going to go to operational settings. So our cat rate is right there. I've got it set to 38400 BPS, which is the default. If you want to take it off the default, a couple ways you can change it. First, you can click it and then change your multifunction knob as so. You can also hit the little carrots off to the side to get you to where you want to be. The other thing that you want to change is your cat timeout timer. That's right here. The default value is 10 milliseconds, but that's a little fast for a lot of uh, systems. So we're going to change that to 100 milliseconds. Now we can back out of here. And there's another place that we can make a change if we want. You click your mode button up there. You press and hold the preset. And you'll see you got your cat rate and your cat timeout timer. And you can change it here. But that is for the preset. If you're going to use the preset, you got to do it here. If you're going to skip using the preset, then you do it under the operations menu. Now that we've got our data rate set in our FTDX10, we want to open up the device manager. We're going to come down here to ports, com, and LPT, and you'll see two new ports listed here. We've got an enhanced com port and a standard com port. Mine are com30 and com31 respectively. However, yours will probably be different. The COM ports are dynamically assigned, but once assigned, you're going to keep this number for the rest of time. You want to note these numbers, especially the enhanced COM port, 
because you're going to use it when you move out and start doing things like FT8 and things along that lines. But we want to double click on this, go to port settings, and make sure whatever we set on the radio is right here. Got a little pull down, so if you selected 9600, you can choose 9600. You can't choose anything like up here, the 115-200, which I use for a lot of my other rigs, because the maximum value Yesu allows you is 38400. Eight data bits, no parity, one stop bit, and no flow control. And just click OK. We're going to do the same thing here. The COM port 2, port settings, 38400, 8, none, 1, none and out. The SD card in the FTDX10 is up to a 32 gigabyte SDHC card, which uh, I've got right here. A lot of people have tried to use larger cards and I'd like to show you what happens when I try to put in a 64 gigabyte card. Install it right down here in this slot, with the label up, put it in, and we get a setup. Just as a side note, I recommend that you avoid touching the screen with your fingers as much as possible, simply because you'll put a lot of grease on there and you know, other funky stuff off your fingers. So I picked up some of these pens. I'll go ahead and stick a link down in the video description. I, I think I picked up a pack of 10 for like six bucks, but we'll go yes. And I want to go format right here. And I'm going to say yes, okay. Now remember, we've got the 64 in there and you get a format error. So I'm just going to click out of there, go back, back, and go ahead and pull this out of here. I'm going to install the 32-bit card. Yes, I want to do a setup. Yes, I want to do a format. Format the SD card, I'm going to go OK, and it takes a little bit here. And our format's complete. Click out of there, go back, back, back one more, and we're done. Now, I don't want to seem really anal about not touching the screen, because we all do it. You touch the screen, I touch the screen, I try to avoid it. But in order to get the funkies off, what you want to do is occasionally clean your screen. To do this, I use this stuff, and I'll stick a link down in the video description. It's the same thing I use for cleaning my glasses. You don't want anything harsh, and this is nice and gentle. You never want to directly spray the screen. So I've got a, a double-sided microfiber cloth. You can see it's different on both sides. So on this side, just up in a corner, I'm going to spray the cloth. You never want to directly spray anything electronic. And I'm going to, just going to go ahead and wipe it off. And then use the other side just to buff it out. And you've got a nice clean screen. I hope that you're enjoying this so far and I hope I'm not going too far in letting you know that I also hope that you're learning something new about your rig. If this is the case, please take a moment to pop that thumbs up icon and give me a like. We want to check our current software versions, so we're going to click on extension settings, software versions, and you're going to see right here I've got VO113, VO15, V0120 and 0100100, those five. And we're going to see those numbers pop up again here just a moment from now. But just be aware of this is what we're starting with. So I'm going to go back, 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 and I'm going to turn off the rig and pull out the SD card. Going to bring up our browser again. And if you recall, I mentioned that you want to keep this up because we'd be seeing it again. Now, if you come over here, you can see on February 29th, 2024, they did a firmware upgrade. This is the first time I'm going to be doing this upgrade. 
So I'm going to click and download the FTDX10 firmware update. And once it's downloaded, we're going to open this up. This is a zip file, so just like before, we highlight it, extract all, and as before, I'm going to extract it straight to my downloads folder. We can open up the firmware, and from the SD card that we had just formatted, which is right here, I've installed it onto my computer, I'm going to right click that and say open it in a new window. I've inserted the USB drive from our Yesu into my computer and that's it right here and we'll double click on this folder. These were installed when we formatted that SD card. This is what we just downloaded from the Yesu site and we want to select these five and we're just going to drag and drop them right over here. So that's what you want to see at this point. Now we can close close that and close that. And if you haven't already done it, you can go ahead and close your browser because we're not going to be using that website again. Now that we have the updated firmware on the SD card, we're going to turn our rig back on. We're going to insert the SD card. There we go. We're going to click yes. We want to go to setup. We want to click on firmware update. And you'll see that the DSP, the SDR, and the audio frequency are all up to date. It's going to want to update these top two. That's why they're checked. So I'm just going to click update and OK. And it takes a little while, but I'll go ahead and fast forward through this. And the update is finished and you notice that the rig cycled its own power. I'm not terribly active with any social media sites outside of YouTube, but I'm betting that there are more than a few of you out there who are. So if you have some time and wouldn't mind, please share. Share something good. This video with your friends and amateur radio cohorts, especially on social media. Now one more thing that you'd probably want to do, but you really don't have to, to get everything working. We've already accomplished all that. But we're going to hit the function, go to extension settings. We're going to click on date and time. And here's where you can set your date and time. You can select whether you want to use UTC time or local time. I'm using local time. And right now it's 1250 on the 8th of March, 2024. Any of these that you want to select, what you can do is you just click on them, use your function key to adjust up and down, or you can use these, these arrows here, but I prefer using the function key. We're going to go back. Now we're going to click on our display setting. My call, that's what flashes up when you first turn on your screen. And right now it just says FTDX10 as the default. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to use these right and left arrows to move to the end. Then I'm going to use the X to get out of there. And I'm going to put in Tom space ND3N and enter that. So now it says Tom ND3N. And how long does it take to stay up there? I'm going to give it like four seconds before it moves on. You can adjust it for the way you want it. And we'll get out of here. One more thing that you might want to set while you're here is the screen saver. You have some options here. I have mine set for an hour and what that does, it prevents uh, static stuff from burning into your screen, which is probably a good thing. So I have mine set at 60. I'm going to set, set it here, then I'm going to just turn it. You, you can also have 30, 15 minutes or off. I wouldn't recommend off. If you are actively working, 15 minutes is probably good. If you need to get up and go get a cup of coffee, 30 minutes. If you are like me and leave your rig running all day long, then 60 minutes is what you want to do, and that is the default. Here we are at the end of the show. I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed putting it all together for you. Please remember to like, share, and comment also. 
please consider subscribing to this channel. I certainly do appreciate any of those things. 73, until the next Hey Y'all, as always, I'm at your service. I'm Tom, ND3N, and I am out. This one's for you. <laughs>